What's up guys? Welcome back to Minecraft's Logical Redstone. Today we're going to talk about memory. So we're going to talk about two main types of memory. Read-only memory, known as ROM, and random access memory, known as RAM. So let's start with ROM. This is basically memory that is stored in one location, like permanently, and it never loses its value. Um, whenever we want to access this information, we can do so by reading it. There are plenty of real-life examples of ROM, such as a CD, which stores information on its surface, and to read the information, you just insert it into a CD drive, and, you know, the spinny thing. And the information on the CD never changes, it's meant to be there permanently. So the only thing you can do is read it, which is why it's called read-only memory. So in Minecraft, the easiest way to make ROM is just an encoder. I mean, an encoder is a form of read-only memory. You have lines that store information, which are the torches, and you can have a truth table for it. So A maps to this, B maps to this, C maps to this, and yeah, you're storing information, and you can read it by selecting a certain character. And if you haven't seen this already, check out part two, that's where I explain encoders in full detail. Um, obviously this is not the only way to make ROM, we can do it in many different ways, as long as you can store information and read it, it's ROM. So what we have here is information trying to go through comparators, but it's being cancelled, and then I have all the outputs being ORed into one single line. So if you want to read C, it unlocks C's comparators by depowering these torches and allowing the C information to be read out. Same thing with B, and same thing with A. And there's going to be a world download as well if you want to look more into it and see how this is working. This method tends to be a bit slower and like bigger because you have like a separate line to cancel all the comparators, but I still wanted to show you it because it can definitely be useful sometimes. Another cool thing is that ROM doesn't have to be one dimensional, we can go as big as we want. So this is two dimensional ROM that basically stores characters. So each line here uh, stores the pixel values of that character represented in torches. So if we turn this A line on, it depowers all the parts of A, which powers all the torches connected to it. And again, those torches are the pixel values that make up A on a screen. So that's why we get an A there. And we can do all these characters as well. This one's coded for a six. And truly, we can draw anything on the screen that we want. And I've used this in my designs multiple times. I've used it for the uh, word processor to show letters, and I've also used it for Tetris just to store all the different types of pieces. And one thing I want you to realize about ROM before I move on to the next type of memory is that ROM in Minecraft is deterministic, meaning that one input always gives the exact same output. Unless you go in and literally change the ROM, which you usually don't want to do, right? You don't change what's on a CD. But this next type of memory is not deterministic, meaning that it's not as simple as input and output anymore. It's not a combinational circuit. It's a form of memory that basically you use dynamically. It's always changing. Uh, and there's no such thing as a truth table for it anymore. But don't be scared, that just means it's more powerful and we can do more stuff with it. And this second type of memory is called RAM, which stands for Random Access Memory. Just like with ROM, we can read from this memory, but we can also write to it, meaning that we can give it new information to hold at any time. RAM is not permanent, and in real life, it's constantly changing at ridiculously fast speeds. On top of that, RAM will actually just lose all its memory the instant the computer is turned off, because it discharges. But in Minecraft, there's no such thing as discharging, so Minecraft's version of RAM is going to have a manual clear function, as well as reading and writing. And notice how I said Minecraft's RAM, because really, I mean, we're getting pretty far away from the actual use of RAM. In real life, RAM would be used to hold data that a program uses in a computer, and unless you're making an entire computer out of redstone, that's not really what we're going to be using RAM for. Really, we just want a form of memory that we can write to, read from, and clear. And RAM is the closest real life equivalent, so that's why I'm calling it RAM. So how on earth are we going to make a circuit that holds information, lets us write to it, lets us read from it, and lets us clear it? Well, uh, this is it. <laughs> All you have to do is put a torch into a torch, and so whenever you want to write, you press this button, and it stays on, because it toggles between two different states. If you want to clear it, you set it back to the original state, and now we don't have it anymore. And as far as reading goes, we're just going to do the easiest thing, which is just locking the output with a comparator, and when we read it, we unlock the comparator and show the information. So what I'm going to do instead of throwing this all at you at once is I'm going to gradually introduce more and more concepts as we go down the line until eventually we have all the parts of RAM that we want. The very first function is really simple. I already showed you it with the torch into a torch. I just changed the design a little bit. So here we have a torch which goes up here into this slab into another torch which powers this dust and so we have a torch into a torch. And so when you power this side on any of these cells, it lights it up. 
and so you can essentially write to this uh, register of information. But you can probably see the problem, we don't really have a way to clear it. I mean, the easiest thing you can do is just maybe go down here and place a redstone block, but that's really tedious. So let's add a clear function. So here's our clear function. By default, it's just a line with a bunch of torches that are off, so they're not doing anything. But they're connected to this dust, which I just showed will reset the cell back to zero. And so if we write information over here, let's just write this and this. Now, if we want to clear it, we just press this button, which floods all these, setting them all back to zero. And there we go. We can now write and we can clear. Now let's add reading. Reading is just another line with torches, except these torches this time are canceling comparators that are just slapped onto the output. And so whenever we want to read, it unpowers all the cancellation and it shows what answer was in these registers. So let's try it out. I'll write this bit and this bit and notice how we don't see anything. You almost can't tell what's in the machine. And so if we want to read it, we do this and we get a signal sending out what was in the machine at that time. When we clear it, I mean, it still clears it. We can't really tell what's going on, but the way to know that it's clear is if you hit read and nothing comes out, now we know that we've successfully cleared it. And technically that's all the functions that we need. I just want to add on one more thing to make it even easier. So sometimes if you're writing to it and you make a mistake, well, now I have to go over here and hit clear and restart over again. That's really annoying. It's kind of a waste of time. So what I have over here is I basically did the exact same thing as like the reading circuit, but in reverse. So now when you try to write, it won't let it in until you hit the write button, which uh, unpowers all these lines and lets whatever answer you're trying to write through. So now you kind of like get time to decide what you want to do first. If you messed up and said, oh wait, I actually don't want that bit. No worries. When you're all set deciding what you want to write, you hit this button and it writes it to the register. And I also threw some lamps on here so you can kind of see what's going on. So that's what's actually in the register. And if we want to see it, we just hit the read button and there you go. Clear, beautiful. And that's all I got for you. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed. World download is in the description as always. Peace out.